So this says, hey, Luke, thanks for connecting. I have seen some of your videos and wanted your advice. I have a proposal from a university for the role of instructional designer, and it's a new role to them. But they need me to train the professors to do basic e-learning themselves. Do you think this will work? And how is it working with faculty as subject matter experts and developers? Thank you. So this one, Tim, I have strong feelings on. Yeah, go Would, for it. So you want me to tackle this yeah. one first? So what I was actually thinking about this is because I have actually done this before um, in the past life. So like to answer the immediate question about do I think it can work? Like it can. It doesn't mean that's an absolute it's going to work, though, because you need to have the professors to be able to buy into this idea, which typically means that this whole new like it potentially this could be like a sweeping reform about how we're going to ask people to do this, where it needs to come from the senior level leadership from both sides of the story, from the instructional design department, as well as whoever is overseeing with these groups of um, instructors, whether it's going to be a team lead or whether these are full-time uh, faculty members and this is more like the dean from the department. If they're really serious about doing this, we need this buy-in and we need this to be like a actual big deal about how this is going to be new for training and learning and this is going to be a whole new commitment and a whole new process because I had this happen at uh, when I worked at Northeastern University where a lot of the professors who I was working with, it was their very first time that they were actually setting up courses in Blackboard and right. they just had questions. And I mean questions upon questions. And it really did feel like it was hurting cats at a at, at number of times where I was like, oh my God. But also understanding that like this kind of was just brought to their attention of like, hey, your course is going online. This is what you agreed to, but we need you to do a certain amount of steps. And it definitely took quite a bit of training for them to just to get comfortable with a learning management system, not mm -hmm. even talking about like an authoring tool or something like that, but just like the basics as far as for saying that this is how you are going to be uploading your syllabus. Here's what a syllabus should actually contain. These mm -hmm. are where you're going to be putting your different things as far as for PDFs. This is where the discussion board posts go. This is how you respond to discussion posts. Like it became a full blown training session over weeks and months to try to really be get um, people to be able to do this. So mm -hmm. that was just a learning management system. And it took me quite a bit of time. If you're asking somebody because the questions talked about um, like e-learning and authoring tools, if we're going down the road though, of like something way more complicated about diving on into storyline or using like something like that, then we are really going to get into some tricky and trouble waters here because I'm starting to get concerned about what the professors are going to think and what are their perspectives. Because mm -hmm. if they say that they're already bending over backwards for their job and then now it's expecting them to be a professor, a facilitator, an e-learning developer and stuff like that, uh, it's going to go poorly. It's not mm -hmm. going to go well. And unfortunately, that resentment is going to go to you, the instructional designer. It's not <laughs> going to go the to the dean. The, you're, you're the right. face in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are the deliverer of the bad information. So you are going to get that hate, which obviously is not fair to you. But like you're the one picking up the reins here. And in the question, too, it said that instructional design is new. Um, to them in this organization, which already mm -hmm. makes me feel like you're going to be at a disadvantage from a power uh, standpoint and perspective within the hierarchy of the organization. No one's going to know who you are. Most likely, they have no clue about instructional design. And then here you are being like, so, hey, this is what we're going to do to make these courses better. Right. They can go along. It, it's, it's something that could potentially get really tricky, and it might take a long period of time. And they may entirely... Um, dismiss the instructional designer. So once again, it can work, but it has to come from the right people. The right buy-in has to be established and then the right training protocols need to come about. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I took a little bit of a different approach here. This yeah, is, a job, right, that, cool. this is cool. a job that I would love to have. Um, this is the way I prefer to work with faculty. Uh, and so my, my shorter answer is yes, this is, can absolutely work and it can be really enjoyable and really effective. Um, and it might go back to someone even posted just this morning in, in the 
one of the Facebook groups about this idea that people claiming that e-learning is just one thing or that e-learning is, I mean, that uh, that ID is just one thing and, and, and it fits this very narrow definition. Um, you know, instructional design is so many different things. Um, and it sounds like in this case, what they're really wanting to hire is a is a professional development person, right? Um, and and if and if they can do that, then this is a great way to scale, and this is a great way to improve teaching and learning across your campus, improve uh, the online teaching and learning at a, at a larger scale. Because if if you're just an ID that is like that end of the line person, or that's more into the e-learning development side, like you said, storyline or or developing Camtasia videos or things like that. Then, then you have a capacity, right? You, you can develop two, maybe three courses a term uh, at a time. Um, but if you're doing this kind of consult model, which is, which is what I call it, you know, maybe you can consult on, on 12 courses at a time where you're meeting with faculty and saying, here's some, here's some training on, on the LMS. Here's how to make a more efficient uh, discussion board. Here's a, a nice way to use Google Slides to make an interactive presentation. Now go do it. Now I meet with the next person. Um, and so you're, you're training them, you're giving them the tools, you're giving them the context of your experience, but then you're kind of sending them off to do their homework and to do the work. Um, and I love it. I mean, that's, that's, that's my style. I like, um, that idea of professional development because now you're not only influencing that course that they're teaching, you're influencing every course they teach because you've given them a new tool or you've given them a new perspective. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're thinking of it from that that perspective, if you're looking at it from a professional development, um, online teaching, coaching kind of position, um, then yeah, it can be very, very effective. So in your opinion, if you're going to be potentially taking this job, because it sounds like this was like, it, it was in the conversational piece that like it was just happening, they were going back and forth and things. One of the things that I'd be really curious about from that person's standpoint is what is their definition of success? Like, how do you know that I'm doing a good job as far as mm -hmm. my performance evaluation? Because from my past experience of trying to be able to do this, I am confident in saying that it's going to be like only half will care the first year. And then eventually the second year is more people tell other people it's going to spread and grow and, and your name will get out there and, mm -hmm. and instruction on design will be able to be talked a bit more about in a uh, more highly favorable light. At the beginning, though, it's going to be kind of rough to see like, hey, people aren't listening to me. They're mm -hmm. not doing what they say. Or maybe they will because the because the organization has said, we're doing this like yeah. you have the authority. Go do the thing. Would you be asking those questions, though, when you're like trying to go through that interview negotiation process? Yeah, absolutely. Is there a, is there an institutional desire to improve? Um, is this being backed at the dean's office at the at the director level somewhere above? Uh, or is this something that's being mandated on them that they're not interested in? Right. Uh, if that's a, a very different thing, too. Um, an analogy that comes to mind is like bicycling in a very high gear. Right. If you're in a low gear, it's easy to get started. You can crank out work, but you have a, like a maximum speed. You have a high gear. You, uh, you, it's, it starts slowly, but you can ramp and, and continue and, and continue to accelerate, right? Um, and I, I see it a little bit that way, too. It, and your comment to it, it may take some time to develop a rapport and to develop, mm. you know, get your name around and things like that. Um, I heard this phrase once, and it was in the context of um, accessibility, but I think it works just in general of professional development and in, and in uh, instructional design and e-learning development, this idea of taking a plus one approach. If each, if each instructor I, I can work with, I can give them one thing to improve their course and then they go do it. As soon as they see that that improved their course, then they come back to me for more things. Um, whereas if I give them 10 things um, and, and, the, and even if they only have time to implement one, they feel like they failed. Um, and they feel frustrated because, you know, Tim gave me all these things and I wasn't able to do only half of them, you know. Um, so that's one of the things I, I've learned in this kind of uh, coaching or this kind of consulting role is to not overload with information, not overload with tasks or tools or, or skills. Um, but in it, it, it becomes my job to listen to their story, listen to their course, identify and, and do all those analytical things while they're talking to me and say, this is the thing. This is the one thing that I think will have the most impact in your course. Let's implement this. And then in, in the spring, we can try something different or, you know, um, and, and then let that evolve. Makes sense. It, it makes sense. And to also make sure that I don't just leave a total negative spin on my past prior life. 
whenever they actually did do things, and then as you said, they started to believe in themselves, the confidence came about, they stopped coming to me over time because they knew they could just, they, they felt confident enough to take the reins and say, I mm -hmm. can do this. And then they came to me if there was real problems. But right. once they actually got trained, it was very satisfying to yeah. see that Professor so-and-so who's been at the institution for 50 years all of a sudden is talking about online learning in a positive light was mm -hmm. really cool. That was... Yeah. And as an instructional designer, you have the tools to be an excellent trainer uh, because, you know, you can model the things that you want them to use. So if, if you want them to use more interactive video, send them an interactive video of how to use their LMS. If you want them to be involved and have better discussion boards, start a Slack channel or start a discussion board where faculty can share ideas. You know, I, I really like that idea of, of modeling the techniques that you want them to implement. And that way they're learning and they're learning about learning. I dig it. I dig it. What a nice, positive, happy feel <laughs> to that one. But it's true. It's true. It's cool. 